Question 29 in our series, looking at Catholic questions and answers and comparing them to Scripture. This is question number 29. Does the church teach that only Catholics can be saved? Does the church teach that only Catholics can be saved? This comes from the New Catholic Answer Bible. The New Catholic Answer Bible is authorized by the Board of Trustees of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine and approved by the Administrative Committee slash Board of the National Conference of Catholic Bishops and the United States Catholic Conference. This is official Catholic doctrine answer to the question, does the Church teach that only Catholics can be saved? It says, in Revelation, the inhabitants of heaven sing to Christ, with your blood you purchase for God those from every tribe and tongue, people and nation. Five, chapter 5, verse 9. The Catholic Church affirms this wideness of God's mercy in Christ, embracing the whole world, desiring with Him <coughs> that everyone be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, 4. Nevertheless, the Church also recognizes that the gift of salvation must be accepted to be effective, and human beings, having free will, may choose to reject or ignore so great a salvation. Hebrews 2, 3. So, they really haven't answered the question yet. They're basically saying anyone can be saved. The church accepts Christ's declaration about himself. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. She also recalls his words to her that warn those who would turn away from her. Whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. Luke 10, 16. Okay, right there. there now they've deviated from Scripture, which uh, basically they're saying that the Catholic Church, uh, Luke, when Christ speaks in Luke 10, 16, he's speaking to the Catholic Church because these are the words to her, to the Catholic Church. Let's look at Luke 10, 16. Let's see if that's the case. Luke 10, 16. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. There is no mention of the Catholic Church, well, anywhere in Scripture. Uh, he's referring to the 70. If you go back to verse 1, it says, After these things the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Verse 17 says, And the seventy returned again with joy. Uh, so when he says, He that heareth you heareth me, he that despiseth you despiseth me, he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me, he's referring to the seventy that he sent out. The seventy he, he sent out um, with the gospel and uh, with the um, ability to heal people. So, Basically, what he's saying is that those who reject... In other words, if you preach the message that God gives you, and that message is rejected, then they haven't rejected you, they've rejected God. That's basically what he's saying, because he sent out the 70, he gave them the gospel of, kingdom, of the kingdom to preach, he gave them miracles to do. And then, when they go out... Uh, we find out they do those things, and he says, basically warning them, if someone rejects you, don't worry about it, because they've really rejected me. So, it's not a message to the Catholic Church. It's really a message to anyone who preaches God's Word for people today. And it's an encouragement to them that they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting God. So, it's not a message to the Catholic Church. If the Catholic Church preaches that message, fine. If not, if someone else preaches, as long as you're preaching the gospel, you're preaching the message that God has sent for today, then this applies to you. It's not just applying to an organized religious body known as the Catholic Church. Okay, so let's continue. What the Catholics say, if Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation and the church is his body on earth, we can understand why the church fathers often declared Outside the church, there is no salvation. Again, 
it's not the church. God doesn't. God isn't saying you are my church, and if they reject you, they've rejected me. Therefore, if they accept you, they've accepted me, and there's only salvation in the church. It's not about the church. It's about the message, and we're going to see that soon. Uh, or to put it another way, all salvation comes from Christ the head through the church, which is his body, as from Catechism 846. They're not using scripture. They're using church father, quote, and then they're using catechism um, to support their position that uh, really you have to be go through the Catholic Church in order to be saved. Um, and we've seen, really, it's, it's, a, it's the message. It's not who preaches it. And we're going to see that soon from Scripture. So they asked the question, does this mean that only Catholics can be saved? The Second Vatican Council made the following informations about the possibility of salvation for those outside the Catholic Church. Number one, those who know that God founded the Catholic Church through Christ as the necessary means to salvation, yet still refuse to enter it or remain in it, cannot be saved. See Lumen Gentium 14. So, what they're saying is that, the yes, you have to go through the Catholic Church to be saved, because it says the Catholic Church through Christ as the necessary means to salvation. Um, that's something based on their own doctrine, their own beliefs. It's not what Scripture indicates. And in fact, we're going to look at two passages which show that even if you're outside of whoever is established as preaching the truth, and you still preach the truth, it's still a valid message. Look over in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. And verse 13. This is Paul writing, and he's in prison at the time. Philippians 1.13, So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all of the other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So you notice, here's a group of people who are preaching the gospel, but they do so thinking that they're going to add affliction to Paul's bonds. They do it not sincerely. They preach the gospel, but they don't believe the message. So you could equate this to someone outside of the church. You could think of an unbeliever, an unbeliever who preaches today that you must trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins in order to have eternal life. Scripture says that those people, unbelievers, preaching the gospel, not part of the church, not part of the church there, it says that he rejoices whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So there's an example of someone outside of the established church or people that you know, but yet they're preaching the truth, and there's rejoicing because the truth is preached. So the motivation behind it, now they're not going to get rewarded because they're not saved, or, or if they are saved, they're not going to get rewarded because they do it for the wrong reason, but there's still a rejoicing in the fact that the truth is preached. So it's not that God says only the Catholic Church and there you got to get saved through them. Here's an example of someone doing it not sincerely, but it's the message. It again shows it's the message that's preached that's important, not who preaches the message. People are being saved even though they don't preach a sincere message, which shows that um, if the Catholic Church preaches the true message, which we found they do not, but even if they did, um, someone outside of the Catholic Church could preach the truth and people would be saved. Another example of this, Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 38. Mark chapter 9 and verse 38. Mark 9, verse 38. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. 
for he that is not against us is in our part. Uh, so there you see, here's an established group of people, the 12 apostles or the 70 or who, whoever it is following Jesus. And then there's somebody outside of that group. And Jesus says, don't forbid them just because they're not part of us. Because you, they're doing a miracle in my name, um, they're not going to speak evil of me. So the idea here is, is it doesn't matter why you're doing it or if you're part of an established group. If you preach the truth, that's a good thing. If you preach the gospel, somebody can be saved even if they're not part of your church. Uh, so that goes against what the Catholic Church says because they say that the Catholic Church is the necessary means to salvation. Okay, the second point of the Second Vatican Council. Those who, through no fault of their own, do not know the gospel of Christ or His church, but who nevertheless seek God with a sincere heart and move by grace, try in their actions to do His will as they know it through the dictates of their conscience, those too may achieve eternal salvation. So basically, if you're not part of, you're not in an area, so what they're saying in the first statement is that if you're in an area where the Catholic Church is, the only way you can be saved is through the Catholic Church, which we've shown from Scripture is not true. Then the second statement they're saying is if you are not in an area where the Catholic Church is, you can still be saved, but by your actions doing, uh, through the dictates of your conscience, doing good works, basically, those two may achieve eternal salvation. But yet, let's look in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. Romans chapter 1, 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What this tells you is God does not specifically work through a church, an organization. If you're outside of where the body of Christ is, where people are, and you don't have the gospel there, it's not you in your own conscience doing good works to, in order to achieve eternal life. It's that you've got an internal witness from God showing that He is the Creator, He has eternal power, and the Godhead. You know that there's a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And when you worship Him, recognize Him, then you have eternal life. It's not by your own works. You go over to Romans 2. Um, in fact, Ro Romans 3. I'm sorry, Romans 3. You look in verse 9. What then are we better than they, no one no wise? For we have before proved, both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So there is no one who, by their own works, is going to be saved. We also see that over in Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Galatians 2, 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The Second Vatican Council said, those who seek God with a sincere heart, and moved by grace, trying their actions to do His will as they know it through the dictates of their conscience, these too may achieve eternal salvation. God's Word contradicts that statement. God's Word says, By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And the standard of salvation for those who do not know the gospel is the eternal witness that God has given man. That's Romans 1, 18-20. Okay, the next statement that the Catholics make, statement number three, Although in ways known to himself, God can lead those who, through no fault of their own, are ignorant of the gospel to that faith without which it is impossible to please him, the church still has the obligation and also the sacred right to evangelize all men. Um, so they're saying basically that God uh, gave, the, uh, gave instructions to the Catholic Church and it's their right to evangelize all men. Um, 
and they're saying, of course, in their first statement that the necessary means to salvation is the Catholic Church, which they contradict in the second statement if the Catholic Church isn't around. And in the third statement, they somehow try to make the two together, saying, well, um, if you're ignorant of the gospel, you can still be saved, but yet it's our right to evangelize all men because we're the necessary means of salvation, even though you can be saved without us. So they don't make any sense. But one thing we should note is um, that the gospel was not given, the gospel for today was not given to those 12 or the 70 disciples there in Luke, um, wherever we were before, Luke chapter 10. Uh, look over in 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. In fact, hold that and also let's look at Galatians 1 first. Galatians 1 and verse 11. This is Paul speaking. Galatians 1 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the gospel that Paul preached did not come from the Catholic Church. It did not even come from the twelve apostles. It did not come from Peter. He did not talk to them. It came directly by the revelation of Jesus Christ. God started something new with the Apostle Paul. He gave him the message of grace, and he was saved, the first one into the body of Christ, and then the message of grace that Salvation is by trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ alone, no works. That message came from Paul, from Christ to Paul and then went out after that and is the method by which we are saved today. Look over in 1 Timothy 1 verse 12, describing that, he says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So here you've got the Catholic Church in their second point says, you've got people who are, are in the third point here. He says, through no fault of their own or ignorant of the gospel, um, the church is obligated to preach the gospel to them so that they may be saved. And yet we're told in Paul's case, here's somebody being a blasphemer, persecutor, and injurious, doing it ignorantly in unbelief. And he receives the gospel not by the church, not by the Catholic Church, but by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 1 Timothy 1.14 And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first, in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So what we see is that with the gospel that Paul received was from the Lord Jesus Christ according to Galatians 1, 11 and 12. And that gospel was uh, given to Paul and he was the first in the body of Christ and he is given as a pattern for them who should hereafter believe. So we should not go back to what Jesus said, even to the 12 apostles. We talked about how what saves you is the message of the truth, regardless of who preaches it. So it's not given to the Catholic Church. You can be saved by an unbeliever preaching the gospel, as we saw in Philippians 1, or by someone outside of the established group, as we saw in Mark chapter 9. You can be saved by the message, not by who gives the message. So it's not the Catholic Church who saves people, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who saves people, and he saves people through the gospel today, he saves them through the gospel that he gave to Paul, so that those who believe that gospel hereafter will receive eternal life. So when they go back to Luke 10, and they try to go with a message that Jesus Christ gave to the 12 apostles, uh, even if they preach the truth of that message that the, that the 70 apostles preached in Luke 10, they're still not going to be saved because God started a different gospel with Paul. He gave it to him, direct revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, and established him first as a pattern for those who should hereafter believe. So the church does teach that only Catholics can be saved. Scripture teaches that 
It's those who believe the gospel, and which today is trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sins. But those are the people who are saved. And even if an unbeliever teaches, gives you that message, if you believe it, then you're still saved. Because it goes back to Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please him, or to please God. So the way you please God is have faith in the truth. You have faith in the truth by hearing the truth and believing it. So you hear the truth, you believe it, faith comes, you have eternal life. It doesn't matter who preaches that truth, even if it's an unbeliever. As long as the truth comes, the gospel comes to you, you hear it, you believe it, then you're saved. So it doesn't matter who teaches it. And the fact that the Catholics are teaching that you're saved by works, which was the second point of this Second Vatican Council, shows that they are not preaching the gospel that will save them. So, when you ask the question, does the church teach that only Catholics can be saved? They say yes to that. Well, what does the Bible teach? And what the Bible teaches is that Catholics cannot be saved if they believe the gospel that the Catholics preach, because this is another gospel. It's the salvation by works. And Scripture teaches us today it's by faith alone in the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we're saved. And when we hear that message, regardless of who teaches it or gives it to us, when we hear it and believe it, then we are saved. Uh, so that was question 29. Join us next time for question 30, which is, aren't all Christians saints? Yes. Well, I want to know, is there going to be like a wrestling match between the Catholics and the Mormons since they think they uh, people can only come to Christ through them. Is there going to be a dog fight? Well, I want to see a dog fight. I well, want to see a dog fight. Well, there probably is that they don't associate with each other because they both think they're the only means of salvation. But Ephesians 6 tells it, for, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. So our, our wrestling, even though they can wrestle with themselves all they want, uh, neither one's going to be saved. Uh, really, the, the true wrestling is, spiritually speaking, uh, going against the principalities and powers. And we're doing that right now. We're really spiritually wrestling against the Catholics. Yeah.